Okay, hi guys. Hello everyone. Uh, week one here, and I think all we really need to do today, or this week, is try to get some software installed and uh, make sure that our first submission can be handled through uh, Canvas. Uh, so we're going to install some software to start with. We're going to use a piece of software called uh, Thani, uh, because we need an IDE, an integrated development environment, in which we can type our, our code, our statements. We'll be learning about Python, of course, this semester. Um, and we need the software to execute that code. And we need to be able to produce a file that's submissible uh, that you can submit. So we're going to use Thani. It's called Thani. So what I've done, let me just quickly, I'm going to really try to keep this video short because there isn't anything too difficult here. Um, Let's start by going to my browser. And so I, I've gone here to, I just did a Google search for uh, Thonny, T-H-O-N-N-Y. And the very first, here I can go back. The very first result here is the one I was looking for, right? So I just select that. And then up in the upper right-hand corner here, if you can see my, yeah, you can see it. Um, you can choose which operating system you're using. It could be Windows, could be Mac. They have an option there for Linux if you happen to have a Linux box. Um, note that there, please note that there is no um, Chromebook version of Thani. I'm hoping that we won't have an issue with that. But if you are using a Chromebook, then you'll have to let me know. And we'll see if we, we can't find a way to get around this. So select whichever version you want, install it as usual, as you do any software. And when that's finished, uh, open up Thani, and here's my Thani right here. So there's two panes. There's an upper pane here and a lower pane here. So this will be where we write our code. And you can see I've already written three lines here. Actually, only truly only one line, but there are three lines. Uh, and this bottom pane will be our output pane. So when our code produces some sort of output, it will print down here. Now we can enter simple statements down the bottom if we just want to do something like three plus five, whatever. Right, but so simple statements, and, and of course, Thani knows how to perform arithmetic. Um, so some of the things that we might be doing. Uh, the thing is we may, well, most software comes, uh, amounts to hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of lines. And so we don't want to just write it one line at a time and hit enter. And that's kind of difficult to deal with. So what we do is this, this upper area here, you notice how even I, will, I have it listed here. I have three lines here already. I could have hundreds of lines of code here. And then I can execute by pressing this little blue, this little uh, run button. So when I press this run button, this code will execute and the output if any if there is any output in this code would show up down here so that's the ide the the, the uh, notion of the ide so i'll tell you a little bit about the, the three lines of code i have here uh, the first two are what we would call comments so it's just uh some text i wrote in there for humans to look at it's not going to be interpreted by Bonnie. And in fact, Thani's going to ignore it completely, right? And so I've created these comments uh, by starting the line with the pound sign or the hashtag. So in Python, when you start a statement with the hashtag, it will be ignored by Python. So that means you're just typing it in for other humans. So I just put my name up there and um, I gave it some sort of a title here. I called it uh, my first program. <laughs> so line three is our first real line of code that's going to get executed. All right, we're going to learn a lot about executing code in in this class, uh, in different different statements and ways that we can write things up. But I've just chosen the simplest possible thing we could do right now, and that is a call to the built-in function called print. So I'm calling the function print, saying, "Hey, print." I need you to do something for me. And 
functions always have a name, and then they have an open paren and a closed paren. And then we're going to end them with a semicolon, right? And so then what's inside of the parens, in this case, including the quotes, are the arguments, the arguments that we're going to send to the function called print. So in this case, we have only one argument. It's a quoted string. So print has been, when it was written, whoever wrote it, uh, given instructions on what to do when it receives a quoted string. And so what it's supposed to do when it receives a quoted string is just send the text within that string to the output. That's all it's supposed to do. So now uh, I've written my, my really my one executable line of code here, which is just printing hello world. I expect to see hello world print at the bottom here, right? The bottom one. Now to do that, we want to say, we want to tell now Connie to execute this or run this. So we'll push that button. Now for you guys, you've never saved this file yet. So we're going to also produce a file. Kind of like when you write up a, a, an essay in Word, you save it, it gets saved to a file. So that's what's getting saved here. So this, this software does two things. It saves the text and it executes the text. Whereas Word just saves the text, right? So what we were, well, yeah, when you click that, it's going to ask you to see uh, the, the contents of this upper window, right? So you'll name the file, I guess, you know, you could name it like week one or something like that. Um, and you'll no, just take note underneath the name box. There's a, there's a box uh, below that, which indicates what the file extension will be. So, and it, it should be like .py. It's a Python file. Um, just like your, your Word documents, they wind up with a, a file extension called .docx. Uh, so we want that .py. It's not something that you should have to choose. Just be you know, cognizant, I guess, that's, that that's what we're, we're saving. So that when you, when you, when you for, at the first time you've written a, a, a program, then you have to do the saving part of it. But from then on, Notice how I didn't have to save it. I've already saved that. Now we, I just did the execute. I'm looking down at the bottom screen and I see my output. My output from the program that I named here, hello world. And you see that the, the extension that got put on there is .py. So you want to know where you save this too, right? Be careful, just like with your, uh, if you're writing an essay for a class somewhere, you need to know where you save that document or you won't be able to submit it, right? <laughs> so I guess get yourself a folder or something, make make a folder so you always save these things, keep them grouped together somewhere. And so we see my, my output here. I can do things like, let's say, for instance, I want to change this. I'll just get rid of the L. So now I, I would expect when I click play here, this is going to execute. Remember, the first two lines here are comments, so they get ignored, right? This is the first line it's going to execute. And so now it's going to save automatically because I've already saved it once. It has a file name. So it's going to save the file and execute it all at the same time. And so we see that there's my modified output. Notice that the quotes are not in the output. What we needed the quotes for was to create a, a, a string, right? Which is a group of characters. So we wanted to group those characters together into one, let's say, unit. And that unit is called a string. So then we sent the string to printf, or to print, and print um, knows, hey, I, I should print out the contents of this string. Right, so functions generally work like that. We, we make a call to a function by its name and we pass it some sort of argument or arguments. In this case, it's just one, right? There's one string. And then something happens. Whatever that function is supposed to be doing, it does it. Kind of like a black box. So I think that actually will, we want to do that part. Just make sure you can find it and submit it in Canvas and we'll make sure we have the whole round trip uh, under control on this. We have the software installed, created our very first super simple program, and made our very first submission. And that's our
kind of our week goal and I will uh, we'll continue moving from there. We have lots of things to learn about in, in programming uh, language here. <laughs> this language we got to learn all about it. So uh, we'll just keep moving as we go. All right. I was able to keep this one fairly short. Talk to you soon.